and we've got it recorded as well. Uh, what I wanted to show for tips and tricks today were really two video tools that are out there that a lot of people can take advantage of in a lot of different ways. So one helps address video recordings and recording your lectures. And the other one is using video for students. And this is something that the nursing faculty is starting to work with uh, for the next gen NCLEX. So I kind of uh, figured that out and uh, shared the tool with them. And they said, boy, it would be great to see a lunch and learn on this one. So that's what we're up to. So without further delay, then let's take a look. The first one that I'll show is a keynote tool on your iPad that will also work with your PowerPoint lecture. So you can do this pretty easily. But I want to walk you through the process of adding a video to your lecture in a relatively easy way. So when you come to um, your video, I'm actually just going to open up a, a uh, picture here. Oh, come on. And we'll pause that. So many of you have asked about adding video to your lectures. Apple just added a new tool into the iPad, so you can actually add that right into your keynote presentation, and I'll talk about PowerPoint in just a second here. Um, but you can add a video in really in any location you want in your video now. So you can go through and just have it stay static in the same corner, so you can see my second video slide. Third video slide. We're going to pause that for a second. But the handy part. Mark, that I, I can't see your slides at all. No, I can't oh, either. Oh, thank you. I guess you got to share. Boy, getting bad, isn't it? Sorry about that. I actually have to share a screen. That would make a difference, wouldn't it? Thank you for telling me. Got off and going a little too quick. Now I bet you can see my screen. Yep. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. So yep. let's Thanks, go back. Mark. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Too many conferences on the brain here lately. All right, so you can add your piece in, and I've just simply recorded a video here so you can kind of see how this looks when you use Keynote. But you can drop your video into essentially any location on the screen that you want. And I'll show how to do that here in just a second, but you can add your video in. You can leave it static, so it just stays in the same spot in the corner. And it will continue to record your voice right across, so you don't have to worry about your voice or any of those other things. But the other thing that you can do when this is in a PowerPoint slideshow, you can actually use your, your uh, pencil, and you can draw right over the top of this as well as you do that. So some great ways to be able to just add in uh, whiteboard. So think about being able to do a whiteboard, being able, oh, here we go, and I'll just, there we go. You can draw right over your video, you, and over your images, all kinds of different ways that you can start to incorporate pieces into your keynote presentation. In addition, one of the things that I always love about having video in my slideshow is it's got my video. The downside is it gets to be a talking head again. Yeah, I'm down in the corner and I'm just chatting away and here we go. And just like you saw, I started firing off thinking you were seeing my screen and blah, 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 blah. Well, I can start changing the location of my video. I can change sides. I can add frames. I can base it on the content. I can do a lot of different things to add the video into each and every slide. There are some times, though, that your video may get in the way or you may want to add video. You may want to just focus right now. So I can have an entire slide right in my keynote slideshow that's just video. So as I get to points and I want to talk to the students and I don't want any distractions, I can add just a full video window right into my keynote. And the opposite that I can do with that then, well, and I can draw over the top of that, add my mustache in, all of those different things. So you can actually draw images right over the top. So have any of you seen Lightboard before? Lightboard is about a $15,000 solution that they went through all kinds of different things to essentially build this. Now, and I was asking for one for us, thinking it'd be great to have a, a Lightboard for all of you to build lectures. Now you have it actually built right into Keynote, so you can use a whiteboard right over the top of things. A lot of times I'll use a black background, and then I've got the, the bright colors right on the black background, and then I can put my picture in wherever I want. 
full screen, mini screen, wherever I want. As I go through the lecture, though, I may also run into places where my video might be a distraction. So I can jump right from having full screen video to absolutely no video. And it's all uh, recorded so there's no break in the action or no, okay, we're going to jump over here. It, you just continue talking, sharing your information. You can make it opaque. So if you needed to, to uh, or not opaque, but semi-opaque or translucent, you can put your image in at the bottom down here. And you can even go so far as to have two video cameras if you want. So I have one camera added that's a front facing that focuses on me. And then a rear facing camera that you might want to incorporate your students into the class as you make some recordings or do some lectures using this tool as well. So lots of different tools to kind of show you how you do that. And then all I did to make this video then was after I made my keynote, I just hit that record button to do a screen recording. And now I have a recording of the lecture that I want that I can share with students with my video in it, with animations, with all the drawing, all of that different stuff that kind of goes with putting that together. All right, so with that, I'm going to stop for just a second here. Does that all make sense to folks then of what we're trying to do? Seth shaking his head, all right. Yes. Everybody else will drop on things, but I see some thumbs up. All right, so now That's once you've seen how to, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and talk about how we do that. So I'm going to go back to screen sharing again here. I'll remember to do it this time. And we can open up Keynote. And actually, before I open up Keynote, if you are um, working with PowerPoint, you can take any PowerPoint slideshow. So here's a sample PowerPoint file. So I can take this and work with this, but to open that in Keynote, all I have to do is go out to my Keynote app, find Keynote, and there's that sample PowerPoint file right here on my iPad. All I have to do is click on that and that will open into Keynote. So I've just taken that PowerPoint file right into Keynote and I can continue to work on it and add the things that I want and do my screen recordings right here. So if you've got something in PowerPoint, great. We'll take that and you can add to whatever you want to do here as well. All right, so let's get to the, the meat of our presentation here. And I'm going to choose edit. And in that edit piece, then I can go ahead and start to add tools. So if you go ahead and hit that plus button, up in the top corner up here. You can add your photos and videos. You can record audio. You can record all of these things. But now what they've added is camera. So I can just go ahead and hit camera. And I don't know if this will work or not at this point. Um, yeah, when I hit camera now, it's going to, since I'm video conferencing, I wouldn't get that. Uh, option to add that in. Oh, there we go. We can do live video. Both of them work. So I can hit live video and now it's taking my video and dropping that video right into my slideshow. And the nice part is I can rotate that. I can change it. I can change the size. I can position it however I want. I can even change shapes and sizes and ratios and just about anything that you would want to do in adding that video. Now, if I wanted to keep that consistent on every slide, I can just now hit that video, choose copy, and I can just paste that right into every slide. That same video then ends up right in every slide that we're ready to work with. And it would remain consistent there. And you can see that over here in the consistency side, seeing the videos down in the corner. Now, this may be a slide that I wanted to work with um, in full size. So I can just drag that around on the screen, change my video, and now I've got a full screen video. So you really so, have a lot. Oh, go ahead. Mark, this is Lane. So are you saying that this is kind of a placeholder? Because obviously I wouldn't want the same video to say the same thing on each slide. This is a placeholder showing you what the camera sees right now. 
Okay. So if I were doing a lecture, I could position that and then whatever is in the camera at the time <clears throat> is what's going to be there. So it's not really a video at this point, it's live video. So whatever your camera is seeing is what's coming up on that slide. So a great example of this would be recording the lecture at this point. So I can't record the lecture, so we're going to skip that piece, but I would go up to this uh, area here and hit that screen recording, just like you always do. And now I could start my presentation. And here we're going to talk about innovations in critical thinking and digital content delivery. Here's the people that are presenting it. And now here's what we're going to talk about, how do we leverage innovative teaching methods uh, to help our students. And as I'm recording this, then that is being recorded in that bottom video window. As I continue on, then uh, three stages that we were working on is digital content workbook or digital clinical workbook, excuse me, digital generation or next generation and the escape channel. So that's all being recorded right in this live video window now. So it's a way to put your your plate or your face and your image right down in that presentation. And then the next one, I change the shape of it a little bit, change position. I could make this a full screen. So kind of a great way to really take a look at how to put that all together. You can even go so far as I said back in the edit side of here. I can put another live video and you can change that to be a different camera. So you can change cameras, you can change positioning, you can do lots of different things with that. But it's really a way to either do a live presentation. So if you wanted to do this live like I'm doing here, you could certainly do your lecture and then move through this presentation and still have your picture down in the middle of your slides. Or you can do a recording of it and your image then in the recording that you have for each of those slides would show up in the bottom as well. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? I love when I'm speaking to, to crickets here. I have Everybody a question, does. Mark. Yep. So can you, if this is for a recording of a lecture, this is not something that you're going to be doing and casting uh, to an Apple TV or something, right? You can actually do either one. You can, ca you can record and cast to a TV? You can record or you can cast to a TV. I wouldn't try to record both, and I'm doing it now, so I guess you, you can through Teams. Um, I can cast out to Teams, and I can be recording it in Teams at the same time. So if you wanted to go that route, you could, certainly could do it that way okay. too. Okay, great. And be using the Teams recording. So if you wanted to record it and cast it at the same time, you can certainly do that. Okay, awesome. But easiest, oh, Eva, it looks like you had a question there. Oh, no, okay, great. I saw a hand kind of move and I didn't know if you were going to jump in. Okay, very good. Um, so yeah, so it really to me makes a great way to engage students and kind of look at how do I get my image up there easily without a lot of jumping through hoops? How do I record it and, and store it and send it? Then once you have this, it's just simply a, a video that you can drop into Brightspace, you can drop into Yuja, you can drop into any number of different ways to put that together. But I was really excited to see that, that feature of just add a live video right into your slides and be ready to go. Lane, I kind of jumped away. Did that answer your question as well? Uh, yeah, sort of. I'm just sort of wrapping my head around it. Thanks. Yeah, okay, it takes a little time. For those of you on the practice, don't hesitate to just schedule some time with me and kind of talk that through. Marla, it looks like either one, you're making noise, or two, you're trying to talk and you're on mute. One of the two. I'm making noise. I'm sorry. Okay, now, I just saw the, the flashing and I thought maybe you were talking and we weren't hearing you. So just making sure. All right. So anyway, like I said, it makes it really easy in Keynote then to create this. Um, for those of you that are Mac users, it works on the Mac as well. So I know. 
uh, Alice, you do a lot of work with the Mac, that same adding video um, into or adding live video works on the Mac version of Keynote as well. Great, thank you. Yeah, all right. Any questions on that one? The other one that I thought was kind of an interesting mashup as I was working with the nursing faculty is they have something going on with the next gen NCLEX. For those of you that are not, not involved with uh, the nursing side, the NCLEX is their board exam, of course, and the um, board that, that does the board exam for the NCLEX decided that they really needed to focus on critical thinking skills and on um, really that whole nursing judgment call and a lot of things that go on. And, and that really wasn't being covered in the traditional multiple choice true and false questions. You really had two, maybe three types of questions out there that you could work with. And that doesn't always test the students other than the ability to remember what's there. So they really looked at how do we change up what we're doing in the NCLEX to, to look at that nursing judgment and make sure that they knew exactly how they were using the knowledge they were building. So they came up with an additional, well, not an additional, but a now a total of 15 different question types, which really I think is going to push our students. And so that's why the nursing division is kind of ahead of this now, trying to make sure that they can prepare the students for that test that's coming up. And, and Alice, remind me, I think it's 2023. So some challenges out there and how they look at that. And I kind of look at that as if their board's moving that direction, your board exams probably are looking at the same kinds of things. So something to be ready for. But we really stumbled on kind of a cool idea um, to help capture some of that thought. So I'm going to show you one of the um, styles that they're using or one of the style question styles they're using. We'll start the broadcast here. So here's what oops, um, that question might look like now. So this is actually right from their sample questions. And instead of simply a uh, multiple choice or select all that apply or true false, here's the nursing notes. And as a student, I need to highlight the findings that would require follow-up. So what we did is we created a template for the nursing division so they could drop their questions right into this to have it look exactly like the test is going to look. And we can do that in either Word or Pages or any number of different word processors. But then we saved it as a PDF file to be imported right into Notability. So this is now in Notability. And for the students then, they can actually go ahead and highlight um, postpartum hemorrhage and required a blood transfusion certainly would be things in that list of things that you would want to make sure you're following up on. And I'm not trained in, in your world, so I'm not even going to pretend that I know everything else that probably needs to be highlighted there. But this is what they would have to do in order to answer the question as far as the NCLEX is in, uh, concerned. Did I highlight the proper material? But one of the things that we looked into was the fact that, boy, if they're going to go this far, wouldn't it be great if the students just came up to the corner up here and actually recorded the screen and talked through their thought process as they highlighted this? So you're going to actually hear student voices then in that recording that they would then submit the video to Brightspace. So now, instead of simply saying, okay, did they get the highlight right? Great. Scoring wise, two students might both have gotten the highlighting right, but one was right on with their thought process. And the other one, I needed a little coaching to help them understand that. Or I can look at their video and see their highlighting was way off. And I can help coach them on the thought process that they should have been going through when I listen to their their recording of how they do that. So as we think through that, then I'm going to stop presenting and jump back to video here for just a second. So I know that was a lot of steps and kind of hurried there. 
but I kind of wanted to get your sense on, does that make sense? And did you understand the flow? And what would be the value of understanding the thought process of the students? So, Mark, um, I can answer your question. Um, yep. Definitely need to uh, have an understanding of critical thinking and just clinical decision making. And so um, they might make a decision based on a guess, which lucky them. But if they yep. guess, well, then pa harm, patient harm can happen. And, and we right. always talk about um, you need to know why you're doing it, not just that you have to do it. So, I mean, that really helps with that. And this is great. You know, Marla and I are working with uh, BSN faculty and um, are working on the new essentials that are competency based. Um, and that includes the BSN program. And, and so this would be, I think, a good fit. You know, Marla's um, probably is, is leading the, the competency issues or uh, competency based assessments, but I feel like this might be a good fit. Um, I do have one question. If like thinking about the nurse practitioners, they do take tests, um, but they don't have iPads and uh -huh. they don't have notability how would that work just in Brightspace? There would, we'd have to dig into a little bit of screen recording technology on the PC side. Um, I'm sure that's there. Jackie, are you aware of something that's free on the PC side that they could use for screen recording? Well, they can use video note right in Brightspace. Yep, yeah, yeah, okay. But will they be able to record their screen? Yes, I think that is now an option. Boy, yeah, that yeah I good. think it is actually an option now. And and they That's could highlight. Could they could highlight like you did in the notability. Or well, no, they can't highlight because they're just doing a screen recording. But there's mm -hmm. not. They don't have the ability to highlight. No. Okay. Well, I mean that's probably an extra bell and whistle we might not need. But I do like yeah. the idea of it. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of nursing research about thinking aloud and the value uh -huh. of that um, in a lab situation. Um, so this is this is nice. Yeah, yeah. That, so that's really what we were looking for when I started this years ago with a, a math instructor. It really stood out. She was um, kind of asking about the value of thinking how students or learning how students think as they do the problems. So we did a a sample problem with her and she recorded the students kind of working through it in their head. And it was really interesting to see because the, the question she had chosen to pose to them to talk through was one that they had constantly had trouble with. And she said about 10 to 15 percent of my students got this wrong. The interesting part is they always got the same wrong answer. And she didn't understand why or what mistake they were making that would lead them to the answer. And by recording that thought process and, and the students talking through what they were learning or what they were doing, she said, now I know exactly what step they blew and, and why they ended up with the answer they did. So it was really helpful to be, for her to be able to then go back and coach and say, don't make this mistake. This is what a lot of students do and uh, coach them through it. And she said, now they're hitting it 100% of the time instead of that 10% that or 15% that continually missed the question. So there's some great tools in there to think about. And as we were putting this together for nursing, I really thought about all of the other divisions too. Just that recording of the student's thought process. And I like you're talking aloud through the, the clinical stuff, Alice, that it kind of fits in that. But I think if we look more toward video and doing that recording, and I'll certainly dig into how do I do this on a PC? Because I'm sure there's a way to highlight in the PC. And I'm sure that if we found the right tool to highlight and we did the recording, screen recording, that we could have that on the PC side as well. So if they had like a, a PDF up and you can highlight on a PDF. Yeah. And then they recorded their screen. I don't know if that would work. And that, that's exactly what we're doing with this is that file that you saw. And uh, let me just share my screen again. Mm -hmm. 
this file is actually a PDF. So we just saved it as a PDF out of Word or, or Pages and opened that PDF in Notability in this case. But we could certainly open that PDF in virtually any PC application and highlight that. And then if we can do a screen recording, so I'll work on a, a workflow to get that done as well. Um, but I thought that was a really handy way to really get into the student's head and understand what their thought process was as they were answering this question. And so we're going above and beyond a little bit, and it was kind of fun. Um, the presentation that you saw earlier was one that we did for USC. Um, and Rebecca um, Baumeister presented that at USC and that thought process and what she was doing with it for nursing. And then Becca Buchart was in the presentation as well. But we had one gentleman in the audience that really jumped on the idea of that recording and said that he's in charge of the, or not in charge of, but works in the um, pharmacology uh, board exam and does readings and does a lot of work with that. And he said, we're back in the 1970s and I can see where this would be fantastic to more look at more than just memorizing drugs and interactions and things like that, but really what that thought process was. So just think about how it can be used, not only in board exams, but just in general assignment kinds of things to give your students a little bit different way to maybe interact with that. So I have an, uh, this is Alice again, I have another question. So in um, one of the courses I teach, students have to create a one page health policy and then they have to um, record a uh, three minute elevator pitch for that policy brief. Um, uh -huh. And I have in the past always had them created in PowerPoint so that they could record and it was all within the one. But this makes me think I could do something different uh -huh. in that regard. So. And that's really what the, the workshops like this are for is just to say, is there a different way? Is there a more engaging way? Is there, who knows, it might be better, it might be, be worse, but it's different and that's I think a lot of it sometimes is just looking at some of the challenges a little bit different way to see if there's something we can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Kind of intended this to be about a 30 minute session and that's about where we're at. Um, if any of you need help with that, know that there's two different solutions out there in different ways and I would be glad to help other ways if uh, you run into challenges along the way. If there are no more questions, I'll give you 30 minutes back and uh, know that I'm here as a resource and Jackie's here. And if there's anything we can do to help, let us know. Thank you. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks, Mark. See everybody. You bet. Thanks, Thank Mark. you. You bet. Thanks, Mark.